Hey everyone, and welcome back to the final match of Kara Cup 11. It's been quite a long time. I think we started like three weeks ago now, but that's completely fine. This game, I believe, was played today, though it may have been yesterday, and it is going to be the lower bracket finals. <coughs> uh, now, in my prediction video, I did predict that Frosty would be in this position instead of Evers, but I don't think it makes a difference. I think A game is definitely going to go 2-0 right here. Um, and I don't want to. I don't want to be disparaging, you know, Evers' chances here, but. This is A-game X we're talking about. He's going to be playing as Con F, by the way, so that's rather interesting to see. No, he's playing as random, isn't he? Yeah, that's true. I mean, he, I don't know. He, he's been doing that recently, so that's not really too surprising to see after all. Um, but he's almost certainly going to have uh, told Evers what faction he's playing. That's what he's doing. And we can see uh, two salvagers onto RUs, followed by a production cruiser. So that looks like a railgun rush to me. Um, could be assault ships, but yeah. D generally, this is, I think, the... No, this is how you would do it for assault ship rush too, wouldn't you? I just feel like um, when I have a assault ship rush, I always want to do it with just one production cruiser, but I guess that's because I'm kind of weird. Uh, and seeing as he's con F, I feel like that's kind of more likely anyway. Railgun rushes are much more, you know, like, game-ending, but... Obviously, the damage from an assault ship rush can be pretty game-ending too. Sorry, I keep like flipping between the carriers, but I'm trying to see like if they're attacking anything. Did the music stop? I feel like I just hit a button and the music stopped. I'm not sure, but anyway, production cruiser is coming out now for a game. Evers is going support cruiser first, which normally is completely fine. Yeah, the music did stop. Anyway. <coughs> Normally this is completely fine, but unfortunately this is kind of playing right into the A-game's hands. That's what he would want his opponent to be doing. Um, this Probot here hasn't seen anything in the middle, uh, but he's probably looking for that um, blast drone base runner, right? But the thing is, um, I think if the probe had been out here and had seen that there's more than one production cruiser out, he probably would know what was going on and you know be a bit more concerned about defense. Uh, but either way, he can definitely still hold this. Now he's going for AAV fabrication. That's a little bit unfortunate um, because it's going to be difficult to hold off these soul chips with the AAVs. Now you can do it, and we've seen A game do that. Um, well, we saw him try to do it against uh, Catharsis. He he would have pulled it off, but then he kind of choked and let in the soul chips. Right? That was in the qualifier. It's it's doable, um, and definitely if you can get to assault cruisers, it's very doable because suddenly you know you have like the perfect counter to assault chips, but you just don't have that kind of time here. Generally, uh, railguns are the, the better counter to this. Um, but, you know, first you have to know that it's coming. Well, he's going to see, I believe he saw sand screamers there and there. He might have an idea of what's going on, but until he sees one of these production crews, he's not going to realize what's happening. Soul ship fabrication finishing in about five seconds now. <coughs> Excuse me. And a game will almost certainly be double producing right off the bat. Yep. And he'll probably get this upgrade too pretty soon. That's generally one that we get in this scenario. Notice that he's invested in some sandstorms though, and this is something that this is something that he tends to do. Rather than just going for these soul chips immediately, which is what I kinda tend to do. I think it's probably wiser. I mean <laughs> generally anything that A game does that I don't is probably wiser, but <laughs> to be honest. Um but you know, that way he can see what's on the map a little bit better, and if there are railguns, he's got something that can deal with them a little bit better, so. So base runner is going to go down for Evers now, and that's actually quite an issue because otherwise it could have set up the turret, which would have been quite impactful here. Power reserve one is coming out, that's good, but you really need railguns here, I think. He's going to continue to make AAVs. Definitely smoke needs to be popped on the salvagers now. There he goes. But these guys probably need to be pulled back too. I don't think it's enough to just smoke them because you only have two AAVs here. By the time your next ones come out, like by the time the you know smoke is ready on this guy, they're, they're all going to be dead. So. Notice also how um, A game is hiding inside of the smoke. That's just a really nice move to make sure that you know your opponent popped smoke, but he still can't even use it. Two soldiers go down on the RUs now. Smoke gets popped again, but I think these guys are actually going to get killed here because of the splash damage. Yeah, and that armor upgrade really, really proving rather effective, isn't it? I mean, none of these guys have died yet. This guy's only at about like half health, and that's the lowest one. Production cruisers from A-game just going to fall back, that's what you want to do, you know, that's how to take advantage of this scenario, is now you go up to refinery mode. If it was a railgun rush, you can finish off your opponent right here, yeah, but it's not. Smoke being used to protect an AAV, but, um, honestly, uh, obviously that's not really the, uh, the priority here. 
But yeah, this game looks pretty much over at this point. These a uh, these assault ships can just chill here for as long as they want. It's gonna take a long time for them to get uh, taken out. And that support cruiser should fall. Economy really not doing well for Evers now, so he doesn't even really have the money to make something to counter against this. And this is pretty much pretty much not where you want to be. Although he does have quite a bank stacked up, actually. I just realized. Um, that's actually well, that's a lot of money. Power Reserve 2 even got researched. Okay, so the carrier is actually a little bit pokey here, isn't it? But I don't think it can possibly be pokey enough. There's only one smoke on these AEDs right here. Another one's going to recharge maybe in time, but... but that support cruiser getting awfully low. I mean, like I said, the game is probably over already, but if the support cruiser goes down, it's really over, you know what I mean? So... This guy kind of going too far back. I would have pulled him in already because then maybe he can take out the DSC. The but... And maybe these guys should go around that side of the hill. Basically, you just want to get your guys around the carrier in like a circle rather than coming in from one front. And then just close the circle in on your opponent's eco. But it's another one of these uh, coalition problems that like getting this guy repaired is going to be really hard. So that damage is essentially permanent. Um, it's basically as good as a dead support cruiser because it's going to be eventually. Refiner mode is finished now for a game. You can see he's making a lot of salvagers. Just going to fill up those bases. Interceptor fabrication also out on the way for him. That's a good counter to the railguns, which naturally should have come out already, but are now finished and, as you can see, beginning to be produced. This, I think, is the push that's going to kill the support cruiser. Unless there's um, some godlike smoke mic right here. I guess it's true that all of them are ready to smoke now. But, uh, oh my gosh. All right. 52 HP on that bad boy. I he, uh, he's so close to getting take, like taking splash. Yeah, there you go. He took splash damage from one of the AEDs, so he went down. So as poor cruiser goes down, Salvager's gonna get raided again. Assault ships can back away once more. Even a death pack being thrown there, but that's pretty futile. And uh, this is this is Torn Crater, fellows. Those <laughs> railguns can't even shoot at the assault ships. That's why this map is so good for early aggression. Is because of like the positioning of the dunes here. And to be fair, A-game also got the very good spawn for it, didn't he? You can tell if you have it or not based on like how far the edge is away from your carry. It should be closer if you have the good spawn to do um, early aggression. I say that, I mean, they're both pretty good. But you can see the, the dunes are a little bit different here. Like you can park a, a railgun up there, I believe he'll have a shot once they cross this line here. It's still pretty bad for the defender, and once he gets to there, he's in cover again, but... Not as bad as what we've got going on over on this side, where this hill here is like um, completely blocking anything behind it. Makes things really difficult for the uh, for the defender. You can see how close these railguns have to be. If they back away at all, then they're not going to be able to shoot, and then the assault ships just come in and do their thing again. It's a tough map. <laughs> <coughs> This was A Game's map pick, by the way, so I imagine this was rather premeditated. That's gonna increase the prison sentence, by the way. That poor guy gets taken out. Now a bunch of sand skimmers and air units are in the area. Um, obviously gonna gonna be able to take out those railguns quite nicely. A Game still doesn't have like a finisher unit, a unit that can really you know kill off his opponent, but. He can take his time. I mean, the only thing Evers could do to exploit that would be like a power rush or something, but that seems rather unlikely here, doesn't it? The assault ship count getting pretty, uh, like, it, it is, it has been pretty high basically this whole time. It's enough that it can easily punch through these AAVs, and that's a big problem. This is one thing the A-game tried to address in his mod, actually, was that um, AAVs actually will win now in the one-on-one -on -one fight against the assault ships because their, uh, their DPS against armored units have been increased. And that means that you don't have this kind of problem where like you just can't deal with these guys unless you go for railguns. That's one thing I think he's really focused on in the mod is like trying to stop trying to stop certain builds to only be counterable if you do one thing. You know, like there should be uh there should still be this kind of rock, paper, scissors element of like, okay, so the railgun beats the assault ship, the assault ship beats the sand skimmer, whatever. But it shouldn't be like, well if my opponent goes for assault ships, I have to go for railguns. That's the only thing I can do. There should be like more than one option. Everything's gone here. <laughs> it's, it's very unfortunate. 
Aegean's still though not getting a uh, not getting a tech that can finish his opponent here really. He might just do it with these Aryans. Yeah, there you go, Evers is gonna resign. So obviously Aegean could finish it off maybe a bit faster by getting railguns, but uh, that's not a problem obviously. He's gonna take game one pretty convincingly. Let's see if I can go ahead and find map two here. Oh my gosh, I have way too many folders open right now. It's actually disgusting. Because I'm, I'm working on my mods, so. Okay, map two is in the, the thing. <clears throat> Probably to be the final map, I don't really imagine Evers will be able to win this, but we'll see what he brings to the table. It is going to be the shallows, by the way, so definitely not going to get rushed on this map, or at least you wouldn't expect to be. Um, definitely more of a, of a long game like longer game type of map. This is going to be Ever's pick, by the way, and I think that makes a lot of sense because he likes to go for cruisers, those are late game units typically. So I think the map pick is quite logical. Uh, I want to wait and see what faction A game is here. He's going to be Galzian, alright. So Galzian versus Coalition. <coughs> uh... I guess it depends what tech Aegon goes for, but I imagine there'll be railguns here. And that's a little bit unfortunate for Evers, isn't it? I mean, he he tends to be a... Uh, I mean, if, if you're going to use cruisers, like, railguns would be kind of the natural counter to you. Sanskira Fabrication coming out before refiner mode. Evers is going straight into a support cruiser. He has gotten the two salvagers. I thought for a second he only had one on the RUs. I was like, that's fast, but... Um, with the base runner retirement and everything, too. Although I don't think he has quick dropped at all. Yeah, neither player has, actually. Wait. Evers did, actually. But he still ended up with seven? I don't know. That's spoopy. I'm not even gonna worry about it. Um, <coughs> but he should have the slight edge in terms of economy here, right? I would think so, anyway. Well, then again, A game doesn't have to uh, doesn't have to make the production cruiser. I don't know. I, s I think Evers does have a slight edge in economy here. He's playing it a little bit risky though, right? To go for the support cruiser very first. But it's the shallows. You can kind of get away with that stuff. I remember um, there was one Kuro Cup where I said like, "Well, it's Sparrow. There's no way, like, no, yeah, I was against Sparrow, and I was like, there's, it's the shallows. There's no way he's gonna rush me on this map.' So I went full eco, and then he rushed me anyway. So I mean, you know, you, you can always uh, be surprised that way, but. Generally, it's pretty safe to go support cruiser first on this map, isn't it? Uh, so Aegon going to move out with his production cruiser now and a couple of sand skimmers, and he's not going to go for uh, refinery mode, at least not yet. Although he may be saving it for now. I mean, the other option would be to make a production cruiser at this point. I don't think he's going to do that, though. But he's going to go railgun fabrication. And that was clearly premeditated, too. You can see how it was timed with the RUs. They went down to zero once he got that. That's interesting, and I wonder what his plan off the back of this is. Now, Evers is also going for Railgun Fabrication. He's on two bases, like, safely. Um, his carrier obviously going to protect that second from any Sand Skimmer aggression. It's going to be difficult for Aegon to push up onto the main. So, and he's making a couple of LABs now, so that's basically perfect for him. I wonder what Aegon's plan is, because this is too slow to be a rush. There's only one production cruiser, but it's... It's too um, unit focused to be eco. I'm not sure exactly what he's going for here. A couple of LABs coming out on the field now. They're going to see these sand skimmers and where they are. Um, Railgun's on the way also. So Evers definitely learned his lesson from the last game. He's like, yeah, I'm not going not gonna to get killed by this trash again. Uh, and he is getting railguns here already. But AV fabrication comes out probably in response to the sand skimmers. And that's fine. That's actually good for him. He just needs to make sure he doesn't overinvest in them. Um, because obviously what he really is going to need here is railguns. And speaking of which, A-Game's production cruiser is here with some heavy rails coming out just now. Ever is probably wanting to position his railguns is right there. But A-Game going to see now, because the railguns fired at him, that they do, you know, exist. So he knows about that. Uh... Yeah, okay, Ever's taking out the position that I wanted him to, although now that the production cruise is moving to this side, maybe it makes sense to put them actually over here. I know, I just told you not to, but whatever. Um, but anyway, you need to get them, of course, in a place where they can range the, uh, the heavy railguns from your opponent.
Hmm. See, the thing is, he's got high ground on his opponent, so his opponent's not going to be able to, uh... His opponent's not going to be able to push. But he's not really... Hmm. Are they are they in range yet? I feel like they should be, but maybe they're not. This is kind of the range you expect from Railguns, by the way. It's like the entire screen if you're looking down. Probably like to bear. Yeah, so they're almost in range. Is that range calibration? Oh my gosh. A game, you dirty man. That's a tech we never see used, but I just realized, yeah, it, against coalition in this scenario, that's like killer. Oh, man. I never even thought about that. Well, because obviously the thing is, you know, your opponent can't push on you because you've got railguns up on high ground here. But your opponent is coalition, so his railguns have a, f a fixed range and yours can be increased. You just get him, like, right here, get range calibration, you can shoot people who are over there. That's, that's crazy. That's evil. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, this this is going to go very badly than I would expect for Evers. He's been safely on those two bases until now, but he's going to have to back up now. His carry is already about half health. He's getting fighter and gunship fabrication. That's actually probably a good move, but I don't think it's going to be enough. It's too it's too late, right? There's not enough time. A game, go easy on the poor lad. <laughs> he's he's just trying his best. There's like six railguns up here now, so Carrier could go down very quickly if it, if it gets into any fights here. Switching to LAB is definitely the right choice here, but A-Game's micro the sand scheme is pretty good. He should be able to keep them safe. And with this many railguns, they can actually like start to contribute to that fight a little bit, so... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, second production cruiser is coming out for A-Game, by the way. Now, Fighter and Gunship Fabrication is finished, so A-Game does want to get a move on here. Um, in order to do that, he needs more sand skimmers, really, I think. And getting the uh, the upgrade... Oh yeah, look at that, he's doing it. <laughs> I was going to say, getting the upgrades for them might be good in that case. Because obviously you don't need anything else for uh, for railguns here. You don't need railgun armor or whatever. You just need to be able to take out the um, the strike craft presence and then you're good to push up on that carrier. He's getting healed, by the way, by the support cruiser. That's good to see. Um, but that's going to take a long time. Uh, let's see, there are two air units now in the hangar. Third one is on the way. Range calibration just got turned on, so he wants to siege the carrier from here. Once he gets vision of it, I imagine he will be. But these air units are launching now. Let's see how much damage they can do. I imagine they're going to kill like uh, three of these things. The production cruiser will probably move out into the middle. Yeah, see that? Because it has some soft anti air. It could be useful in this scenario. Still hasn't targeted that carrier, I think. There we go. Yes, yeah, so that's two going down. Down goes a third, I would expect. One strike fighter down. Two down. Three down. So, probably after getting that third railgun, he should have docked them. But I mean, I feel like he ne he needed to get more value out of that than he has, right? So it's probably game over either way. It was a good idea though, going for air. That's definitely, I think, what he wanted to do in this scenario. Assault railgun. Say, I forgot about them. They, they can they can do this too. Uh, AAV gonna be turbo annoying to pop a smoke down on his carrier. I love that. That's so annoying for, for A game. But, <laughs> but the carrier will go down, I believe, in this volley. There you go. Ranged calibration, man. You never see that, but it, it worked perfectly in this scenario. And now, now that I've seen it done, I kind of feel like, man, why haven't, why haven't I ever thought of this? That's so obvious, you know, especially on this map where, like, you have such an open area here, protected by two high grounds by your opponent. Yeah, it just it makes perfect sense, but I never, I don't know, I never thought of that. That's so cool. Well, okay, A-game is going to be our lower bracket winner, though. That puts him in fifth place for the tournament. Uh, not a surprise, really, but hey, uh, what is the surprise is Evers getting up to the finals. And I think he should be very proud of this, especially as this is his first time in the tournament scene. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you next time.